According to my studies, I found out that one of the least recognized but most important reformers in the history of Mohammedan Islam was Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the father of the Turkish Republic. Will you elaborate? I'm glad you asked this question because it is so relevant to what is happening especially in Turkey today. I would certainly like to share his story with our listeners because it shows that when there is a will, there is almost always a way. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk was born in 1881 in Selanik, Ottoman Empire, to Muslim parents and grew up under the Ottoman Caliphate. He was a very gifted army officer and was later appointed as commander-in-chief. He was a revolutionary statesman and the founder of the Republic of Turkey as well as its first president. Mustafa Kemal proved himself an intelligent and extremely capable military officer while serving as the divisional commander at the Battle of Gallipoli. He became an outstanding frontline commander and gained much respect and admiration from his troops and his former enemies for his abilities and his chivalry in victory. Following the defeat of the Ottoman Empire at the hands of the Allies and the subsequent attempt for its partition, Mustafa Kemal refused to let the dismemberment of his country to occur and was instrumental in leading the Turkish national movement in what would become known as the Turkish War of Independence. Having established a provisional government in Ankara, he defeated the forces sent by the Entente powers. His successful military campaigns led to the liberation of the country and to the establishment of the Republic of Turkey. As the first president of Turkey, Atatürk embarked upon an unprecedented program of political, economic, religious and cultural reforms. As an admirer of the Enlightenment, Atatürk sought to transform the ruins of the Ottoman Empire into a modern, democratic and secular nation-state. The principles of Atatürk's reforms are often referred to as Kemalism and continue to form the political foundation of the modern Turkish state. Mustafa Kemal was 42 years old when the Republic of Turkey was formed in 1923. He capitalized on his reputation as an efficient military leader and spent the following years up until his death in 1938 instituting wide-ranging and progressive political, economic, religious and social reforms, transforming Turkish society from perceiving itself as Muslim subjects of a vast empire into citizens of a modern, democratic and secular nation-state. He was one of the few leaders of a predominantly Mohammedan Muslim country in the world who understood the reason for the total collapse of the Ottoman Empire. He knew without a doubt that it was due to the backwardness and inability of the empire to progress and evolve because of the chains and shackles that hold Mohammedan Muslims mired to the time warp of the 7th century Arabia. He comprehended fully that because of the Quran and Muhammad Sunnah, they can never change. He was the only leader in the history of Muhammadan Islam who was able to attempt to unchain his people by the use of extreme measures and get away with it. His sole and most focused intention was to separate mosque from state for the first time in 1400 years of Muhammadan Islam. He forbade the wearing of the hijab for women, which he considered rightly as a form of subjugation and humiliation of women. He propelled Muhammadan women into the 20th century with education, more freedom and equality than they had ever had in the last 1400 years of Islamic rule. He disallowed the wearing of the fez by men who were forced to wear Western clothing. He transformed the Turkish writing from Arabic script to Latin characters. He transformed the education system from concentrating on the Quran and Hadith to all the modern sciences for both boys and girls. Men and women were allowed to socialize and dance with each other and with so-called unbelievers without the fear of retribution by the mullahs. He muzzled the mullahs and the religious leaders and relegated them to simple sermons in their mosques without the ability to incite or interfere in the affairs of the secular state. He was first and foremost a Turkish nationalist who somehow realized that the worst enemy of the Turks and the one that kept them ignorant, backward and ossified was actually the imported Arabian foreign cult of Muhammad. 
a belief system which is Arab in origin, accepting an alleged prophet who was an Arab, praying to a god called Allah, whose origin was pagan Arabian in the language of the Arabs, towards what was a pagan Arabian shrine called the Kaaba, and following rules and regulations that were and are founded in the sands of the Arabian desert. There was nothing Turkish about any of it. The fact that he was a despot and a dictator cannot be denied. It was his unbending hatred of the fundamentals of the cult of Muhammad and Islam and its scholars that makes him stand out as one of the worst enemies of Allah. During the early days of Kamal's career, many of his followers were under the impression that he was a champion of Islam and that they were fighting the Christians. Ghazi, destroyer of Christians, was the name they gave him. Had they been aware of his real intentions, they would have called him Ghazi, destroyer of Islam. In 1933, the first glint of the new moon had a special dread significance because Turks had been ordered by their stern leader, Mustafa Kemal Pasha, that beginning with this Ramadan, they must no longer call their God by his Arabic name, Allah. As an ardent nationalist, Kemal considered that there is no reason why Turks should not call Allah if Allah is God by his Turkish name, Tanri. There is, of course, no reason for doing so except centuries of tradition. No reason except that Turkish imam or priests all knew the Quran by heart in Arabic, while few, if any, had memorized it in Turkish. Strict to the point of cruelty, Kamal also decreed that Muezzins calling the faithful to prayer from the top of Turkey's minarets must shout not the hallowed Allahu Akbar, Arabic for God is great, but the unfamiliar words, Tanri Uludur, which meant the same thing in Turkish. When Imams threatened to suspend services in the mosques and hide the prayer rugs, the government announced that it was holding thousands of brand new prayer rugs in reserve and threatened to produce newly trained muezzins who know the Quran in Turkish and are ready to jump into the breach. Nearer and nearer crept the moon to the crescent. Ramadan was almost upon Turkey when officials of the Department of Culture, which includes religion, screwed up their courage and told Kamal that he simply could not change the name of Turkey's God, at least not that year. Already, several muezzins had been thrown into jail for announcing that they would continue to shout Allahu Akbar. After centuries of indoctrination, the mostly peasant populace were getting agitated and matters could have turned ugly as they obviously sympathized with the Allah criers.